It's been a really mixed start to the year, with some countries now firmly moving into recovery territory, with some pent-up demand starting to filter through the economy, whilst others are very much still in the midst of the pandemic and still have social restrictions in place. And this all flows through to the real estate sectors, and the impact has been pretty diverse. For offices, we did see quite a sharp fall off in demand last year. And although leasing volumes do remain subdued, we are starting to see some tentative signs of optimism, and we do expect a stronger second half to the year. For logistics, it's the sector that's shown the most resilience throughout the pandemic. And in certain markets, we've actually seen record levels of demand. And this has been really boosted by that strong demand coming through from e-commerce. Retail and hospitality are the sectors that probably had the most direct impact from the pandemic and the various social restrictions and lockdowns that we've all been through. And these sectors are still continuing to face some ongoing challenges. So today I'm joined by my colleagues around the world. Marie Puyboyo with the future of work and the workplace. Sufian Alsebak, changing occupier requirements. Sean Coglan, Global Investment Trends, David Barnett, The Outlook for Data Centres, and Regina Lim with Asia Pacific Capital Flows. We know today that many employees are burned out and feeling anxious, and this is starting to impact their performance. Workers want more certainty from their employers about what lies ahead and employers want employees to return to an office on a regular basis. Most companies are undecided about longer-term workplace strategies, but many are planning to keep components of remote and hybrid ways of working. The purpose of the office is evolving, from a place where you go to do work, to a place that reinforces cultural ties, drives collaboration and innovation, and enables professional growth and brings the company best to its clients. Offices will become more social, collaborative and tech-enabled to inspire employees and customers who occupy them. Three priorities are emerging. First, company needs to define, then iterate the optimal hybrid work model. Second, employers will need to adapt and transform to support this shift in working culture and behavior and lean in workforce preferences to meet them wherever they are. Third, offices layout should be dynamic and maximize the value of in-person contact while accommodating a variety of uses throughout the day. The new normal is not only a physical destination, it is also an always-on operating model that will keep changing and adapting. A clear majority of global occupiers have adopted a wait-and-see approach. This is a stark contrast with the aftermath of the 2008 crisis, when global occupiers, especially in the financial sector, were quick to jump on cheap real estate at the time. Second, global occupiers have undoubtedly crossed a cultural roadblock. Remote work was popular already, but it was informal and not institutionalized yet. Now, Amongst the wide range of global occupiers in all industries that have announced their post-pandemic office plans, very few of them actually envision a future without at least a fraction of remote work. Third, the world remains fractured. So even though international occupiers, especially based in Europe and in the US, have voiced their support for greater flexibility for their employees, this post-pandemic normal still needs to fit in a world that's very diverse, very complex, with countries where corporate culture and typical living arrangements can be very different. We continue to see the longer term tailwinds in favor of the real estate capital markets intact. And if anything, what we are experiencing at the moment is that li liquid environment is facing a lack of opportunities in the immediate term. And as a result of this, we're seeing that core pricing is really strengthening. The relative resilience and strength of the transaction environment really does vary by country. 
We're seeing the mature liquid markets with deeper access to capital are experiencing healthy appetites for commercial real estate products. There is a heightened focus on higher quality core and core plus product, living, logistics, and alternative sectors. Those three combined drove 52% of closed transactions in the first quarter. Living sectors in particular were the most significant beneficiaries in the first quarter. Cross-border capital flows do remain muted, but we are seeing international investment corridors emerge, which enabled transactions in the US, the UK, and Japan in particular. The pandemic completely changed how, when, and where we work. But it's also had a really different impact on each property sector. We've seen leasing activity drop in offices, hot demand for industrial spaces, and robust growth for data centers. And while the data center sector has recorded strong growth for the past five plus years, it really burgeoned amid the pandemic, hitting record demand. If you look at the United States alone, demand increased by 72.9% year over year in 2020. And there are several factors driving this. One, we saw the use of streaming services absolutely skyrocket as people work and play from home. Two, we saw businesses significantly increase their adoption of virtual services, connecting their employees to keep innovation and collaboration going, or at least to a certain extent. And three, e-commerce boomed as lockdowns were put into place. Now, all of this computing needs to be supported by data centers. The data has to flow somewhere. And as a result, we continue to see hyperscalers and cloud providers drive demand across the globe. And this is going to continue throughout 2021. In the first quarter of 2021, Asia-Pacific direct real estate investments were flat year-on-year, -year, outperforming EMEA and the US. Markets with strong domestic liquidity such as China, Japan and South Korea made up the bulk of transactions. Hotel and retail investments saw a sharp rebound from the middle of 2020 and of course logistics remained the favourite sector where investment volumes grew significantly year-on-year. These early signs really confirm our view that investment volumes this year will rise in excess of 15% compared to last year, underpinned by strategic allocations to multifamily, data center and logistics assets, as well as a bounce in office, retail and hotel investments in tandem with economic recovery. Uh, as for new trends in the coming quarters, we expect an increase in sale and leaseback transactions as corporates seek to free up cash flow as well as a broadening out of multi-family transactions away from Japan into Australia and Greater China. And finally, we will see a growth in asset allocation to office, logistics and data center assets anchored by a high growth technology company.